Now this is a video I've been wanting to do for a fair while. Ronald Koeman's Barcelona up against Ernesto Valverde's Barcelona. We're already a few games into the season and I think at this point we do know how Ronald Koeman wants his Barcelona side to play like, you know, what's his best formation, tactics and players. We do know all about that now and I think it's the perfect time to compare Komen's Barcelona with Valverde's Barcelona. I think after seeing Barcelona struggle post Valverde, we've got to give him a bit more credit than he's probably gotten. You know, winning two La Liga titles isn't an easy job, but he got it done. It's not been the brightest starts for Ronald Koeman and Barcelona this season, but still, we're going to have some fun on FIFA 21 and compare the two managers' teams. I've gone and created Ernesto Valverde's Barcelona team, representing his team from the 17-18 season. I've also tried to get the tactics right, which I'll be showing you guys very soon. And I've done the exact same thing for Ronald Koeman's Barcelona. Of course, a quick disclaimer, don't take these results too seriously because it's FIFA. It can be broken. It's just a bit of fun. Let me know in the comments section who you guys think is the better manager, Valverde or Ronald Koeman. Anyways, drop a like on the video if you guys want to see more content like this. Subscribe if you're new around here. Let's get this started. We're starting off by taking a look at Ronald Koeman's Barcelona team. The first thing you'll notice is a stark difference in formation. More of a 4-2-3-1 with, of course, attacking wingers and aggressive midfielders. Messi this season has played as Barcelona's number 9. He's, of course, not had the best of starts to the season. He's been mostly played as a false 9, to be fair. Felipe Coutinho in behind has been deployed as a cam in this formation but of course at the moment he is injured but when he played he was looking pretty decent. Ansu Fati down the left side we know how good this talent is just turned 18 what a player Barcelona have for the future. Antoine Griezmann on the right again he's had a bit of an up and down season and mostly down to be fair. Moving on to the midfield Frankie de Jong and Sergio Busquets seem to be the first choice central midfield pairing under Komen. And of course, in the back, you've got Jordi Alba, Longley, Pique, and the new signing, Serginio Dest. I could have included Roberto, but since Dest started the Classico, I'm going to stick with Serginio Dest. Mark andre Ter Stegen in goal. Ronald Koeman does not have good squad depth. There's no denying that. I mean, it's a pretty bare-bones squad, especially towards the back end. You've got Martin Braithwaite. I mean, he's not really Barcelona quality. Usman Dembele certainly is, but can he stay fit? I don't know, but he's on the bench. Trincao is a very decent talent. Of course, you've got Petri, who is criminally underrated on FIFA. Like 72, are you kidding me? Yeah, he's got to be higher rated than that. Pjanic, Roberto and Neto complete the bench. So this is Ronald Koeman's Barcelona. Tactically, this is what I've gone with. Pressure on heavy touch with a balanced attacking approach. And we've got instructions wise, Messi as a false nine. I'm trying to create the tactical setup of Koeman as accurately as possible with Griezmann being asked to cut inside, get in behind and get in the box for crosses. The same with Ansu Fati. Coutinho having a free roam role. Busquets asked to stay back while De Jong giving a, given a bit more freedom. At the back, we've got Alba and Serginho Dest asked to, you know, overlap and make them run. So that is Ronald Koeman's team. Now we take a look at Ernesto Valverde's Barcelona and you'll again notice a stark difference in formation. The wingers are gone. Edney went for a very, very narrow formation with Luis Suarez and Messi up top, of course, ridding them of any defensive responsibility. Paulinho was the man that played in behind them for that brief one season. I think that was the season, 17-18, where Barcelona under Edney were at their very best. We've got Andres Iniesta in the team as well. Good to see him back in a Barcelona jersey. Not a big fan of Ivan Rakitic, but we've got him in the team. Sergio Busquets as well, still in the lineup. Jordi Alba stays as well in both teams. Sergio Roberto on the other side. PK and Umtiti at the back. Now, before Umtiti had all the knee issues and whatnot, he was actually a quality defender. You can't deny that. Remember all the Puyol jokes about Umtiti and all. So, yeah, that was the Ernesto Valverde backline with Umtiti, PK, Roberto and Alba that he went with. I think this was the season Barcelona collapsed in Rome. That's what we're basing the team around. So there you go, Ernesto Valverde's Barcelona. The first team is here. And on the bench, you've got Paco Alcacer, Usman Dembele, Arturo Vidal, Felipe Coutinho, Luca Digne, Semedo and Silicon to complete the bench. This is what I've gone for for Ernie's team. Now... His defensive style was more of a balanced approach because Barcelona were very pragmatic under Ernesto Valverde. The same I've gone for the attacking setup. Play role-wise, you guys know the drill. Messi's taking everything pretty much. 
and instructions wise we've got a very free roll being given to both Messi and Suarez to do their thing up top Paulinho to get into the box We've got Busquets to stay back, Iniesta and Rakitic as well in midfield, Iniesta to get forward, Alba as well to make overlapping runs. It'll be interesting to see which team comes out on top, one team with wingers, the other team without. What is FIFA 21 gonna prefer? We'll see. For now though guys, time for the gameplay. It's Ernesto Valverde's Barca up against Ronald Koeman's Barca. Let's get into it. Where else will you get to see Messi shaking hands with himself? Oh my god. Anyways, we've got the home kit being worn by Ronald Koeman's Barcelona and the away kit being worn by Ernesto Valverde's team. Just to clear out any confusion, let's get it started. I'm very curious to see if we can have Leo Messi score from open play in today's video because you guys know Messi hasn't scored from open play so far but Frankie de Jong scores from open play. A fantastic finish that puts Ronald Koeman's Barcelona into the lead. First attack and a goal already. I mean what's going on here? Um, that is taking me by surprise. I didn't expect Coleman's team to be so aggressive and to get the goal so early. I mean, it has to be a Dutchman as well to give Coleman's team the lead. And here we go. Frankie de Jong, the goal scorer. Ansu Fati, the provider inside to Frankie de Jong. Now it's Messi. As I said, he hasn't scored from open play in real life this season. Can we see him score today in this video? It'd be nice if he can. We'll see though. Busquets now on the ball. Komen's Barcelona completely dominating. I think it's because of the formation. I'm not entirely sure, but they've been on the front foot from minute one. Messi now on the ball. The dribbling is there, but Umtiti read that one well. I completely forgot to mention this, but I have increased the overalls of some of the players on Valverde's team to represent what their rating was back in the day. So that's exactly why Suarez is 89 rated and so on. Completely forgot to mention that at the start of the video. I'm an idiot. Anyway, Suarez here on the attack. Tries to find a pass, but Longley did incredibly well. Now look at Coleman's Barca push forward with Jordi Alba. Maybe a cross into the box. Of course, there's no one really to head the ball. So he's gone back for Felipe Coutinho, who could get it on his right foot. Nope, Busquets isn't letting him near. And now Messi on the counter. This is the situation that Nesto Valverde's Barcelona had often, you know, with Messi and Suarez, the lone two forwards. Iniesta has joined them. Luis Suarez, though, on the ball. Could look for the pass. Instead, goes back for Busquets. Ball played forward for Paulinho. Tries to head it down, but that didn't work. Frankie de Jong looking for Felipe Coutinho. Once again, all the possession is with Coleman's team. Ansu, Coutinho, Griezmann now. Looks for Felipe Coutinho. Can he get that to stake in? Just about saves that. Edney, come on, make your team do something. Rakitic, Busquets and Iniesta are getting completely overwhelmed in that midfield. Half time and the best way to judge this half is to say that the team with wingers is winning and the team with a very narrow and predictable setup is losing. That's kind of what defines Ernesto Valverde's Barca team. But anyways, Frankie de Jong with the moment of magic early on and Coleman's team in the lead. So far, haven't seen much from the big players like Messi, Coutinho, Suarez or even Iniesta from Valverde's team. Let's hope the second half can spring these superstars to life. Uh-oh, I think we've seen an injury here. That is one of the first times I've seen an injury happen in any of my experiment videos. And it's Andres Iniesta. That's a big blow for Ernie. Let's see who he brings on. I think it's going to be maybe Arturo Vidal. We'll see though. Yes, indeed. We're going to see Arturo Vidal, the Chilean in action. For Ernesto Valverde, what a surprise that is. Of course, we know Vidal played a lot under Ernie and even Setien for that matter. He is in the team right now. Second half, I can definitely tell both teams are putting more pressure on each other. But it's still Coleman's team keeping possession really well. Busquets looking for Messi. Messi now with a chance to shoot. Messi just simply doesn't want to shoot. It kind of reminds me of Messi in real life these days. But why did he not take the shot? There would have been a simple finesse shot and Messi would have made it 2-0 for Coleman's team. I just don't get that. Oh, space opening up here for Ernesto Valverde's team. Sergi Roberto could look for the pass. Finds Busquets. Busquets inside for Messi. Messi under Ernesto Valverde, of course, has to score. Well, at least somewhere we're getting Messi to score from open play. Celebrates in front of the camera. Of course, we know Messi loved playing under Ernesto Valverde. Some of his best statistics came under him. And he gets the equalizer for Ernesto Valverde. Some actually good build-up play. And this literally reminded me of Ernesto Valverde's Barca team, you know, with them not playing well at all and Messi bailing them out. That's literally what's happened here. It's 1-1. This game has definitely gotten a lot more interesting now with that Messi goal. It was kind of against the run of play with Coleman's team dominating and creating all the chances. But yo, Ernesto's team stuck in and got the job done. It's now 1-1 and game on. Messi goes for Vidal. Vidal looking for Jordi Alba. This is typical 
of the Barcelona team under Edney. Here's Jordi Alba, but he's gotten crowded off. Griezmann tracking back to defend, and there's nothing he can do from there. Not gonna lie, this was kind of a dead game, which kind of represents how Barcelona were during these times, so can't really complain. Suarez looks exhausted after doing literally nothing in the entire 90 minutes. Let's see what extra time brings. You know what? Screw extra time. Let's just go directly to penalties and have some fun. Because I want to see penalties between Barcelona and Barcelona. Bets on Griezmann missing this. Oh my god, I called it, man. That sums up Griezmann in real life these days. Rakitic, is he going to miss? He misses as well. Brilliant. Barcelona are bottlers. So, I don't know who's going to bottle this one first. Pjanic, though, bangs this one. We know he's good from the spot. 1-0 for Koeman's team. Luis Suarez is a decent penalty taker, puts that home, it's 1-1. Uh-oh, it's Messi taking a penalty. Well, he scores, no problem at all. In real life, Messi has scored his last 12 penalties consecutively, so fair enough. Vidal scores this one, it is 2-2. Let's see how this progresses, Ansu Fati taking this one off the bar and in. Wow, Ansu, brilliant. Now it's Messi for Ernesto, is he gonna miss? He is in perfect pen from Leo Messi from another era. It's 3-3 now. PK to take this penalty for Komen. Slots this one home. Not bad penalties, man, so far. Felipe Coutinho to take this one for Valverde. Summing up his career under Valverde, Coutinho's gonna miss this, but let's see what happens. Felipe Coutinho versus Ter Stegen. And oh my God, wow. Ter Stegen just fell down. He knew he couldn't stop that. Busquets to take this one. Another decent penalty. We're gonna be here for a while by the looks of it. If PK misses, Coleman's team gets the dub. PK misses and Ronald Coleman just edges this one out. I mean, we can't really make a conclusive decision based on this experiment because it was so tight. Barely any chances in 90 minutes. It was all the drama in the penalty shootout. But anyways, according to FIFA 21, just about Ronald Coleman edges the experiment. I guess fair enough. A win is a win. Coleman takes this one home as this is the end of today's FIFA 21 experiment. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. If it was entertaining, drop a like on the video, subscribe if you're new around here, and I will catch you all next time.